Kim Jong Un. Who? Kim Jong Un. Guys, this kid is dangerous. This kid is dangerous. Now I realize we thank God on Saturday that the 85-year-old Korean War veteran from America, Merrill Newman, was let go. And I love the fact that Newman got set free and President, Vice President actually, Vice President Joe Biden was coming back from China and Japan and was willing to swing by and pick him up, take him home on Air Force Two. And he said, nah, that's all right, Joe. I, I'd just rather take a regular flight home to see my wife. I don't need to come riding back home with you. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool in his part. But thank God he got set free and he's coming home. But Kenneth Bay, the Christian missionary, the 45-year-old man from Seattle, Washington, well, he's still rotting in a North Korean prison. His crime? Nobody knows yet. They said he was sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, sentenced to 15 years hard labor in a labor camp. Nobody's going to pick him up because he's a Christian. Now, I thank God for Merrill, 85-year-old. He has faith in God, and that man did not need to be there either. So thank God we got one of them out of there. But Kenneth Bay, he's being left behind. Well, you say, well, Kim Jong-un has let him run his own country. Well, let me just tell you something. I told you this kid is dangerous. He's cocky, and he's dangerous. He's been sitting down in the basement playing with his video games, and now he's playing with the, gr the green and red buttons on the nukes. Well, his uncle, after his father died, it was his uncle who helped l make sure that he got put in power. It was his uncle that seen to it that he was put in position to be the president of North Korea. Well, now it's his uncle that's been arrested. First of all, last week, Kim Jong-un dismissed him, removed him from power in charge, second in command of the military. And now... He's had him arrested in public, in front of everyone, in a parliament meeting. Look at this picture. Kim Jong-un's uncle dragged away from a meeting and erased from the documentary about the nation. They just He's just gone. What's going to happen to him? This is this guy's uncle. There he is. There he is being, uh, they're dragging him away. From this meeting, look at all of the How would you like to be those guys sitting right there in the parliament? How do you feel? How secure do they feel when the uncle, when the uncle, the guy who put Kim Jong in power, if he's being arrested and drug away right in a meeting, how would you feel if you were just sitting there as one of the parliament members? How secure would you feel in this? One man ban regime, this communist nation of oppression, where you're not allowed to speak the name of Jesus or be cast into an inner prison or be shot dead in firing squads. Just two weeks ago, he executed 80 people. Kim Jong un did. He executed 80 people in public executions with machine gun firing squads. He even killed eight of them in a stadium packed the stadium with 10,000 people, brought these eight people out and had them mowed down with machine guns. This guy is ruling with a rod of iron, folks. Kim Jong-un, if you would drag your old uncle out of there to create fear that you're in charge. Wow. Are you serious? And listen to this. In this dramatic moment, the once powerful uncle of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un was hauled away by police from a political meeting. Long regarded as the second most powerful man in the secretive state of North Korea, Jang Song Taek, which is his name, Jane, Jang Song Taek, was key to his nephew's rise to power. However, North Korean state-run news agency has announced today, Monday, December the 9th, 2013, that he had led a dissolute and deprived life and said, what? He had been dismissed 
for a string of criminal acts, including corruption, womanizing, and drug-taking. So Jang and his followers committed criminal acts baffling the imagination that they did tremendous harm to our party and our revolution. The agency said in a report following a meeting of the ruling Workers' Party, Kim Jong-un attended and guided the meeting, which decided to dismiss his uncle Jang Song from all his posts, expel him from the Workers' Party, and throw him in the street or in prison. We're still waiting. Affected by the capitalist way of living, he said, Jang committed irregularities and corruption and led a, de uh, a, a, a life of, of crime. The news agency added, saying that the decision to remove him was also based on mismanagement of the country's financial system and corruption. So, Jang Song Taek pretended to uphold the party and leader, but was engrossed in such uh, criminal acts as dreaming different dreams and involving himself in double dealing behind the scenes. So Kim Jong-un has had his own uncle thrown out of power and tossed from the government. The man that helped put Kim Jong-un in power has now been thrown out of power. Wow. Are you serious? If Kim Jong-un will publicly do that to his uncle, what will he do to Christians when he himself is an atheist hating God? He actually thinks he is a God. This is why you need to pray. For, the, for all of the Christian brothers and sisters that are in Christ Jesus in the underground church of North Korea, they're in danger. And as they're being persecuted, your Bible is being fulfilled in Matthew 24, verse 9. It told you, 9 and 10, it told you that one of the signs of the end times was not only just earthquakes, folks, not just comets in the sky, but the persecution of the body of Christ. It's right there for you to read. Matter of fact, let me read it for you in case you haven't ever read this verse. Most Bible scholars will skip it because it doesn't fit their thought process of the end time eschatology. But you have to take the entire scripture for what it says. And this is what Jesus said when he was asked about all the signs of the end times. We all know about the wars and the rumors of wars and the false prophets and the false Christ and the nation rising against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms, and famines, and pestilence, and earthquakes, and natural disasters, and diseases, and all of these catastrophes. We know this. We also know, he said, that's just the beginning of sorrow, and then he takes you into the real sorrow, which is the persecution of Christians. Look at this. It says in Matthew 24, verse 9, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many a wax cold. Folks, these are just some of the signs. There's a lot of them that we're watching them come to pass in these last days. Now, we don't know the day nor the hour. No man knows the day nor the hour. No, not even the angels in heaven, not even the Son of God, except only the Father when the Lord is coming for his bride. He's coming to get his bride. But if you're not saved, you don't want to be left behind. Please give your life to Jesus Christ. We'll continue to monitor current world events. I want to thank Reverend Gary for this report. We're going to continue to monitor things going on around the world. I'll be right back. Don't miss today's show at my website, www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. From 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern. Now, you might want to get there early. We've had such large crowds that our website can only handle so many. So if you go to my website and it can't and you can't get in the chat room because it's it's packed out, and we're right now contacting uh, Yahoo to try to get more um, more 
capability, more capacity. Uh, if that is jammed, you go to live stream. I have a, I'm on live stream as well under, under the coming apocalypse, under Paul Begley. You can find me. And you can watch it live and it has a chat room there. Or if you want to listen on Blog Talk Radio, you can listen there under coming apocalypse. Or if you're just driving around and you're not going to be at a computer but you still don't want to miss the show, uh, then get your cell phone and dial the number 347-324-5208. That's 347-324-5208. And listen to all three hours on your cell phone. Uh, the crowds last night. Over 1,580 people at one time. We had 123 salvations last night. Unbelievable Our, as people are coming to Christ. So don't miss tonight today's show from 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern. Come to my website early. Log in and stay there. Get a seat. You're going to have to come early to get a seat. Hurry. You can do it in Jesus' name.